There's a few things wrong with this recording shown on screen. Ikuzo. Somewhere I've reached a thousand videos in that performance playlist, and people love thousands. They add a digit and a comma when a thousand happens. The word million was named after thousands because it's a thousand of them. Note that playlists can be a bit dodgy. It's possible things can get unlisted and blocked and removed by me being fickle or by higher powers. A hundred or so are my own tracks, so I can't really call them all covers. There's one track whose original writer requested I take it down because they were bombing all their content. But there might also have been some I failed to put on the playlist, because YouTube isn't very good for organizing content. And yeah, there's a few repeat songs, but I've got literally hundreds more that I did in audio only, and I might start publishing them so I don't need to keep an offline backup and can instead entrust it to Bandcamp, who explicitly disallow cover songs. I'm very dis organized because of the rate at which I have ideas versus increasing chronic illness. I kind of need a full-time archivist if anyone's interested, but yeah, I might publish extra old covers and I'll share the link out when there's something there for you to never ever want to click. So I've proven that I can play a thousand different songs, at least if I mostly make them kind of sound the same as each other, and that almost means I have value as a person. Nah, I don't really value recital. It's largely an act of tribute and imitation, with spatterings of novel contribution. It's a pastime. It's filler between my original songs, which I'd hella like to get back to. See, despite how reassuringly, comfortingly chill I come across, boy, I'd love to form a parasocial relationship with him. I'm a frantically uncomfortable person, entirely unable to relax. I've only been recording for a couple of minutes and I'm sweating so much. I attribute this discomfort to chronic pain, suicidality, and a concentration disorder, all of which I attribute to each other. I really dislike existing alive in time. The things I like are friends and music, and the thing I both like and can access is music. I'm not always in the mood for friends. I need a fucking face cloth. Thereby, the closest thing I have to a satisfying hobby is playing music. I know how songs go, and I recite them on a piano in a dingy basement where I live. I mean, under where I live, the place I chose because of its dingy basement, with room for a digital piano. I'm doing my best to get the room fully soundproofed across the years, but I'm bad at sorting this stuff out. So street passers-by might notice the little vent bleeding horrible baritone that keeps going back to the start of the song, and if I'm a nuisance to them, it's just how I deal with the nuisance of life. You'll occasionally hear cars or birds song from out there, but that's in the rare instances that it's not night time. I do this mostly for my enjoyment and appreciation for the songs. But when I play songs by myself, unmonitored, I don't really stick to the structure and go all the way through unless I'm recording it, monitored. So I use that smartphone app they call a voice recorder that actually records all kinds of sounds. And that was a good way to ensure I do the full song. Or bail and start over if I do anything imperfectly. That's a big distinctor between this and live performance. The fact that you can restart means that you will. And it feels like that increases my mistake rate because mistakes are now correctable and maybe it's easier to declare something a mistake. And it feels like it increases my, maybe it's easier to declare and it feels, but that means I'm in control. What I publish is what I choose to publish rather than the real time attempt to coordinate a performance. For a couple of years, I shared these ramshackle phone recordings with friends who might be interested, like one or two friends who liked the songs and that justified the effort of going through with it. But it also technically made me the kind of guy who sends you voice notes on Messenger. Ugh. Like, it's an imposition rather than just accessible. It's as if you owe me your listening time four minutes at a time, and that's not a fair ask. 
I idly archived these on phone backups across the years, and yeah, maybe hundreds of these can go online because there is no justice. I know there won't really be listeners, it's just there. I'll delete anything too bland or clumsy, and the ones I've done in video, though maybe sometimes the audio was the better take, maybe the mic positioning keeps more richness to my voice. There's a Kate Bush song I nailed and was annoyed I didn't film, so if I find that. I'll get these online bit by bloody bit, I guess, but being my own archivist is boring compared to doing stuff. Now, let me show you the music dungeon. So it's just a terraced house basement. It's got this shelf that may as well be a bench, sofa cushions, dehumidifier, guitars I probably shouldn't store somewhere that gets humid, but whatever, and this digital piano I got a year ago to replace the black one I had for a decade. I actually went for a narrower keyboard so it was more portable, and I dig its sounds, but it's already got something rumbling inside of it, and I need to inspect warranty repairs or something, but that stuff I never get around to. I used to put my phone up in a phone case in the ceiling pipe work, but that phone died and this one doesn't fit that kind of case, so I'm onto these spidery things. It seems to work, though getting it to clamp without pressing one of the buttons is difficult, as is getting the angle to hold right. I know I should set up a DI and microphone, and I kind of have the tech, but I just don't have the bother. It would undermine my projects to concentrate on that, even just aesthetically it feels wrong to me, and I'd have to keep my head still or use the Britney mic I got and have used once. This is a functional headset mic. I'm not sure I'll get any further use out of it, really. People be calling this a murder basement, and it really annoys me. I swear, you murder one TV license inspector. So this thousand history is plagued with different audio imperfections, depending on what I was using at the time. Whatever, you can squint past it and hear the performance. I think I play in a very percussive style, which is a euphemism for no dexterity. I have grade 8 at piano, but I really feel that I just squeaked by that last certificate through sympathy and happenstance. I know that's not how it works, and I'm like certified elite, but there's so much I can't master. Sight reading, fast movements, that sweep thing they do, nah. My interest petered out toward the top end of the grades because I wasn't into the music and I just don't move that fast. What I am good enough at is playing piano in my style, which is chordal bars singing the one, four, seven, one, four, seven rock rhythm that I use all the damn time. Left hand basically just doing power chords, very familiar figures I rely on, no gymnastics. There's not much to it, but it suffices. I seem to finger click a lot, which I should really keep in check, because every time I do it, an African child dies. If I know how a song goes as a listener, I can play a decent chordal go at it. Some songs aren't very chordal, so they can't necessarily be made into a stripped-down two-hands version. But the stuff I'm into is largely stuff I can play a version of. I love songs. I think I've got a lot of brain space devoted to knowing songs, but I do almost always get the lyrics up on screen, and thereby I'll probably get the chord sub too. Often someone on Ultimate Guitar has tapped out the chord set for guitar, and I optimize it a bit and paste it onto a single screen using Zorn stickies and have a Go. This does mean I've sometimes retained the Mondegreens oversimplifying some fuck-ups of whoever copied it out. I'm mostly aware and embarrassed of where I've done that, so maybe I'll replace those songs someday. Yeah, I retain the right to delete these videos, especially if I think I can do better or at least clearer audio. Then again, I'm nowhere near as slim as I used to be and my hair will never be that sleek again, so maybe it's not worth it. The first few are guitar based from when I didn't have access to a piano and could actually play guitar. I'm less into guitar lately because it fries my carpal tunnels and because it's not making a good sound. I used to have a strumming only technique that kind of worked for the songs I make. Now I don't know if it's tuning, intonation, technique, but I'm just not that good at it anymore. It's choppy at best and it has this dusty cobwebby vibe which really suits me but still isn't nice to hear. I tried a few on a keyboard, but it's so different to play a keyboard to a weighted key piano that dynamic response can be very unsatisfying. I kind of almost consider keyboards to only have function as part of a band. 
maybe a single-handed melody and some freaky voice it can do. Note the distinction I'm drawing from digital pianos. Digital pianos could easily be programmed with a massive range of voices, but that would be choosing not to artificially limit the product they're selling to us. One thing I miss from the dodgy digital piano at my parents' place is the auto-octave doubling thing. That's an awesome sound and a difficult manual technique. Filming at that time, I was just using a laptop, webcam, and microphone from when laptops had better onboard tech, but still not that good. Tinny, hissy, frame rate. I wasn't smartphoned. Being at my parents' place, I was using the time they were out. It'd be very annoying to hear someone keep retrying a song from the start. You can look how big that room is and judge my self-definition of being lower middle class. Reaching this setup really facilitated it for me. I'm not disturbing anyone and the camera can be above me. So above me that my head is massive, but that's the best look and the best sound. I've tried some at different angles, but I shouldn't have because it compromised the sound quality. Up here means that L and R piano speakers are like pointing the right way and kind of equidistant, and my voice is above and between them and closer. Perfect. I wasn't aiming for a thousand, wasn't doing it for quantity, though reaching it might be a good checkpoint to check how bland I've gotten. I wouldn't exactly struggle to reach 2k, but maybe let's not? At least not without diversifying my sound. It's songs I like or love, and they get views up into the two digits. Sometimes someone comments asking me for sheet music, and I re-explain that I don't look at it that way, this is my interpretation rather than the correct way. It's an instinctive interpretation, and I'd rather they learn a chordal understanding of music than a hacky attempt at a single song. Teach a man to hack all songs. I obviously skew toward the obvious songs that track ones, the big singles, maybe because they'll get more searches, sometimes because they're better, more fun, more accessible. I guess by inflicting my sound on the songs, I am giving them something new, even if it's kind of the same thing most times. Still a new lens. This is all in the midst of progressing disability, which threatens my joints, and my hands are full of joints. I've luckily not yet lost the ability to do piano, keyboard, or computer keyboard, but it's kind of a threat if I stick to life. Look forward to that. One question for cover songs is, should you do the voice? And there's an obvious moral sway toward, no, imitation isn't interesting compared to the original, but there's an instinctive sway toward, yeah. It's just what we do. Nearly everyone's guilty of covering or singing along in an imitation rather than directly in their voice. So I think I do that to some extent, and there's some voices I think I can do nearly perfectly, at least inside my head. This recital context is halfway to karaoke, like the audience partly wants the original thing, even though it'd be far more interesting to be a different thing of that thing. I can't morally defend it. No, you probably shouldn't do the voice, and yes, I probably will. Even my voice is one of the voices. I think I perform things with the kind of British cabaret melodrama assembled from my baritone influences that I wouldn't necessarily single my own songs with. Though I'm guessing there. Maybe interpretation invites this performative near pastiche that my personality doesn't conjure for my own stuff. Maybe I'm shyer with my words, or it's something about not having something to compare it to. This kind of brings the sincerity of performance into question, as any cover song might. Maybe any performance might. But to me, sincerity has farce in it, and punchlines, and the ridiculous. It's all there. So I'll rig up a camera and keep having a go at the song. It can take a lot of takes, and that's embarrassing to admit, but it's the perfectionism of being able to restart. And most times, as silly as this is, I've literally not studied the song beforehand. The clip starts with my first attempt. Maybe a small few of those get online, but I'll probably crash. And then stupidly retry from the start and then stupidly retry from the start rather than study the bit I crashed at because only a complete take has value and as I reiterate it I'll ad lib new things and I'll like them and they'll become canon and then I have to remember every damn ad lib in sequence as well as the skeleton underneath it So 
sometimes it's even non-musical things I do and want to keep, like, movements, looks. You can often see how many takes it took from how sweaty I am. And maybe I'll have worn the top notes of my measly vocal range out, but I'm determined to get through it. There's only been a few times I've given up on one or left it to another day. It's just dogged focus, a hyperactive attention that might evidence some deficit or disorder. It ain't healthy, but that's life for me. There's some here where I'm not satisfied with everything, but if I did another take, something else would be wrong about it. Maybe my hair looks bad, or I chew up one word, or I'm in pajamas that have creased up weird and make it look like I have genitalia. Sometimes I reach the end of the song and think, okay, save, but maybe I can do it better. Then I'll probably get it within a few takes once I've already reached the end. The further I've got, the further I'll get. So I render that recording, upload it privately as I make a new one, render that, and then have the annoying decision of two different takes of the same song being played in nearly entirely the same way. Maybe one where I technically guessed a little better versus one where there's no spittle. Look out for spittle. I'll end up weighing up one thing I forgot to do versus one thing I did better. One amateurish habit I have is that I'll speed up as I go, maybe gaining confidence, maybe something like rock and roll energy. Maybe I'll start out at a reasonable medium pace, then as I get more used to those bits I do them faster and that's how it ends up. But in a lot of these, click the start, then the end, and notice how overclocked my inner metronome must be. All I can say is, oops. To some extent, this gotta go fast is my rock piano vibe, but maybe it's also the weakness of my vibe. Fucking sweat. Ugh. I can't do all that rubato, breathy interpretation subtlety stuff that some performers do. I'd like to be able to access that someday, but I think I'm locked into pace when a song's on. With no room for beauty, <laughs> and that's just what I'm like. Take it or lump it. Some of the thousand that stand out. There was the Bowie lyrics to My Way, which weren't publicly audible when I first recorded them. Scraps of his recording has since been published, and I think I got it right. There's a few where the original artist has found and enjoyed it, sometimes without even telling me I have to delete it. I get superlative compliments in comments, like that song that Pro Anna Teen Girls from 2015 liked. Yeesh, I hope they've all grown up to be well adjusted young men. I'm obviously not doing these for the popularity, which is convenient given the outcome. There's only seven that have reached something K views. This song is left in Russia for some why. I guess I'll make a best of playlist. I'm that self involved. Hey, someone's gotta be. Part of the question is how much detail to include, and part of the answer will be the limits of my talents. I've stripped it down to the skeleton, the chords, then it's just whatever I can rebuild with two hands and a voice. I might start out with melodies and ideas, but maybe as I get toward the end it's just about ending the song safely. Because occasionally I can fuck up the very last chord or bar or realize I haven't figured out how to end it. And sometimes I might want to rewrite a bit of it, but I need to make it clear that I've chosen to do that and not just got it wrong. I used to change the song's key to suit my voice, but I'm not as comfortable doing that now. Maybe because the skill is to potentially play the song with others, and that's likely the key they'd want. It. I'm not sure it's right to sing something an octave lower because I really don't have an upper vocal range. Is that just admitting the blind spots of my talent? Too many songs use the word baby. I don't know many babies, and they don't really understand when a song is addressed to them. I'd like to get more adventurous, more rubato, more odd chords, maybe more odd sounds, but I guess every video on YouTube is there to be found and assessed individually, and they've each got to stand by themselves like that. I feel I may have missed when things have like extended chords, I may have collapsed them down to major and minor chords, and I'd like to do that less. Every singer's gonna have habits and phases that come and go. I've hit some high notes in some of these that I can't even fathom at the moment. Lately I'm remembering how fun vocal fry is. 
I have an annoying macro habit of choosing not to load up the song before I try it, just to, from memory, then putting it on afterwards and noticing the essential detail I missed and could have been ready for. When I've covered a pop song, something not written by its performer, I've hesitated to whom to credit it. I don't really believe in a song belonging to its most well-known performer. It existed in its entirety before they got to it. The songwriter made it, and often even performed it first. Britney's success involved imitating Matt Martin vocals on his demo, and that's a condemnation of gender hegemony in music. I've seen people assume Elvis Presley wrote his songs, and I believe in confronting this and highlighting the songwriter more, but really the Mets Martins enjoy their positions as open secrets. A hot decade ago I would do hours of streaming performance to the few people who were brave enough to attend on the site Ustream. If there were people who watched I could try that again, maybe move on to kind of set list videos. There's no real point to this, I guess I can now say that I I've recorded a thousand song performances and people can say, that's amazing, seek help. It'd be cool if there was some easter egg across the video titles of the first second of everything or something, but nah, not yet. Generally, to me, it's just one of the best ways to spend up the time of being alive, though maybe it would be better with company. You're invited to sing with me. Wait, not, not you. Y you. Here's to not another thousand, but to me putting my time to better use, making every cover count, and working on my own music more. Thanks for your patience.